The new season of Torchlight is just about to hit. Once again, it launches on the 19th of April if you're in EU, 18th if you're in NA, that is the late evening or early morning, depending where you're from, and it is the Mistville season. There is a lot to go into, but in this video, I'm going to talk about the biggest things that I took from both the patch notes and the seasonal reveal. Now, we'll kick things off, as always, with the new hero. Erica finally got her second hero trait, and it is very true to... Kind of the identity of Erica. It's lightning based, it's fast, it's, it's about doing high amounts of damage but giving up some survivability to do so. And the way that this character does that is that your main skill will always apply shock. This is a shock based character but in doing so you will apply shock to yourself meaning you're obviously going to be much more vulnerable to enemy damage. Now you also get some base shock scaling throughout the game which is going to make your progression with this ailment much easier. But the idea is that you go very fast and you trigger something called feline figure, which causes you to inflict shock on nearby enemies up to three, and you will settle that shock damage 10 times, which is a huge amount of damage. Uh, and this can be triggered on a 0.5 second cooldown. And with it being a cooldown, that means you can scale it with cooldown recovery speed. So a ton of damage, you can almost play like a trigger build with this ability itself. And if you don't know how shock works, basically when you hit something, you will leave a shock on the target. And then when you hit it again, you will settle that shock and deal an amount of damage equal to your base shock chance or any additional effects to your base shock. And that will be consumed. But with feline figure, it is not consumed. So you will always get that 10 shock settles as it doesn't consume any on it so you only have to have the shock status it doesn't matter how many now there are other things as well we have the electrify which causes you to settle even more shocks on the target you're going to gain stacks of electrify just from running around which is going to be very easy on this character as at level 75 you no longer have to hit the target to trigger feline figure instead when shock is owned so when you are shocked you have a 30% chance to trigger feline figure on up to three enemies for every one meter of movement made. So you're going to be a bit like an auto bomber. It's going to be able to run around and apply shock and deal a ton of shock damage to enemies. Now in the theme of speed and shocks, Lightning Walker is one of the level 90 traits, which makes it so that your max shock settlements and uh, the amount of shock damage you're going to deal is based on how much move speed you have. So you can tell just how fast we're going to get. So the big thing about this character is probably not going to be the damage it's going to be figuring out how to mitigate that self-shock so we'll have to see if there are any tools they gave us on relics or memories to deal with that as we haven't yet seen any there are ways to mitigate shock damage with their traits that make you take less shock damage but other than that we haven't really seen anything now there isn't a lot known to us about the mist so far but i will tell you how it works as far as i can see so far you're going to go to the mistville and you're going to be presented with this five by five board and you can see in the top left there is a sanity amount you're going to spend sanity to progress from where you started through the mist to try and find the clock tower. Now, as you do this, you're going to be met with a whole host of things. You can be met with negative squares, which are going to block your path, or you can also be met with things that are going to help you and restore sanity or give you items that are going to help you on your future days within the mist. So a day in this would basically mean a grid a five by five if you are lucky enough to get through the mist and it does seem like luck is the most important thing as far as i can see right now there'll probably be some way to you know big brain it but it does seem like you're just clicking blindly through the mist to find the clock tower and if you do find it you'll have to complete an encounter and progress onto the next day until you eventually reach day 15 and then you can do the final encounter and be rewarded with the activation mediums and these are the big reward from this season so an activation medium is a way for you to automate every skill your character has access to and there are many different versions of this you can have it so that you activate your enhancement skills when you when your character gets within range of an, a rare mob you can have it so that your character just tries to use your skill as frequently as possible essentially every character becomes an auto bomber in this season as far as i can tell now there may be some exceptions things like bing probably don't work with it and they also made it so that spell burst does not work with triggers so we'll have to see exactly how all this plays out but as far as i can tell attacks do get a big buff from this because a big thing about attacks in the past was in torchlight it kind of sucks to have to aim and it also kind of sucks to have to stop and hit things and i mean this alleviates both of those problems because they're going to be automated essentially you'll be like a seething rayhan with your guy doing all the attacks except it will be you so I'm very excited for these activation mediums. I think they're going to make a big difference to which skills are going to feel good. 
How they're going to play in terms of bossing, I don't know. And also how obtainable and annoying they're going to be to get. Again, we don't know, right? Because these are scalable. They do have roles. Each one comes with three abilities. What that is going to affect the amount of damage that it adds, cooldown that it has, so how frequently you can trigger the skill, and various other things that are going to affect whether or not it's actually good for your build. So we'll have to see how hard it is to get perfect ones, or if you even need perfect ones to begin with. But all in all, I think it's really cool. We did lose things like rhythm, so we can't now automate our skills without these, so engaging with the mechanic is pretty much mandatory unless you want to buy these things from the trade house. Uh, but I mean, it's the new content, so I imagine most people will want to give it a go. Now, the final thing on the mechanic other than that would be that there is a meta progression associated with it. There's going to be a board that assists you in progressing through the mist in future runs. So you're going to be able to scale it up. And much like every other season, there's always a skill tree. This one looks a bit smaller. It's not like the City of Eternity where we have 5 million points to put in. This one looks kind of straightforward and it's just going to give us extra resources, extra loot, all that kind of stuff to help you progress better through the mist and to get better rewards. So very cool. This season has attempted to put in a stopping gap between, you know, your character as it is when you leave the campaign or the early game and to get you into that later game by adding in prototype items. So there are prototype items for memories, which is going to provide the effect of the memory. Typically, it's going to be the memory that provides another hero trait or it could just be a really strong item. So something like surging inspiration which is a really, really good helmet that can be used with Spellburst. Now there's kind of a baby version of Surging Inspiration that gives a similar effect, but is not as good. But you'll be able to gain access to it and kind of get your build online much sooner than you would if you were to wait to get a few hundred to a thousand FEs and buy one. So they've done a lot of work in order to kind of bridge that gap. And not only that, they've done that for the campaign. There are now troves in the campaign that are going to provide access to legendary items. So if you want during the campaign, you can just stop and level through these troves and get some really sick leveling gear. Uh, and it shouldn't take too long. You also get a ton more XP. So level in, get in your character up to scratch. The early time mark progression has been changed so you can power through the nether realm faster. Everything this season, they've tried to make it more streamlined, easier to get through, and so your character isn't going to feel like trash until you get expensive legendary items. So, very cool in my opinion. And they weren't too heavy on the nerfs either. Some stat outliers got nerfed, things like mind control and reap purification got a slap on the wrist. I still think they'll be good. Almost every underutilized hero trait got a significant buff. They actually redid all the hero memories and hero relics. Can't go over that in this video, but if you want to check the patch notes, I will link them below. Uh, they did things like remove some of the less useful affixes on your relics. You know, relics and hero memories, you only get a few, right? So you don't want to waste mods getting, oh, I'll get 3% life on my relic. No, you want something character defining, important, something that's going to like synergize with what your character is meant to do. So they've added new affixes, stuff like cooldown reduction for Rayhan, stuff like additional life based on your rage stuff like damage based on your rage or even the chance to trigger burst an additional time when you consume rage which is basically 30 percent additional damage for rayhan so train seems to have got a big buff uh, again i can't go through the entire list and tell you all the cool ones but basically every hero got cool memories and relics uh, that you should definitely definitely check out then finally the thing we'll leave off on is the change to auras so Aura's got a complete rework. Previously, you had three aura slots, and you could place as many auras in those slots as you wish. If you had the know-how, you could get like 10 plus auras on your character, and you could leverage that into becoming an absolutely godly character. Now, you are maxed out at four. You get four aura spots, and you can put four auras in there, but we got some really, really good new supports. Probably make up for that in some degree, so less auras, but more impactful auras that you're going to scale much, much further. All in all, I think this season looks really fun. I'm going to be playing it, of course. As for what I'm starting, as it's probably going to be the new Erica, and I'm probably going to start with Thunder Spike. We'll see where it goes from there. So if you want to play what I'm playing, stop by stream on the day of release, and I'll go over it before we start the actual season. Um, and if you're playing something of yourself, yo, let me know. Uh, obviously, the things that were good before are probably still good now, even stuff like Mind Control, maybe not Thundercloud, but Frost Terra Gemma, Mind Control Yoga, Arrow Iron High Art, anything, probably still absolutely fine. And Train, obviously, it goes without saying. All my Train boys out there, big ups. I'll see you guys in the next video.